What is up everybody and welcome back to this Dash and Plotly tutorial series in Python. This video is going to be about state as well as HTML tables within our web app. So uh, as you can see right here, I went ahead and imported state to start uh, for our dependencies. And state basically is another event that our callback is going to be looking for instead of just right here where we put just the stock input as what we're looking for and then we're outputting to the graph. Now we're gonna need an event to submit the callback. So before this update fig function was firing every single time we typed in any value into uh, the text box. So let me demonstrate. I put a print statement down here um, that I just deleted and let's save this and run it. So we'll wait for our app to load for a sec and then click on the URL. And I ran it a few times before this. So the spy loads is before. So take a look right here where my cursor is at the top. What happens when we type anything in? It's going to consistently update. So when we go over here, we can see the data frame got printed out a bunch of times. We don't want the callback firing every time we put something in the input box. So what we can do is put a comma. And we can put right here we can put state. So the state is in this case going to be the stock input actually. It's a little counterintuitive. You'd think the state would be uh, the button, but in this case, the input is going to be an event as the button clicks. So we'll assign that ID later, but let's go back up here and actually create our HTML uh, button. So we'll say right on the side of our input box, we'll say HTML.button assign an ID and we'll call that submit button and we need an event and that's called end clicks and um, that should be about it so and then the children will be submit so this last part right here end clicks and then children equals submit um, is going to basically just dictate the event we're looking for in the callback. So down here as well, end clicks will be passed into the update fig function. So n underscore clicks. I'll put that right there just to start. Now that we have our uh, event, we can say submit button, and then we're looking for n underscore clicks cool and it seems like we have everything we need there so let's give this a shot and try it out i'll save it and then it looks like i have i forgot a comma i always forget commas cool and i'll rerun this and we'll watch now that it's not going to update every time we type in the text box And boom, there we go. And we can see that it only updated once. We can check here. So when we last ran it, which was right there where I'm highlighting. So as you can see, the data frame only printed once. So that looks great. So the next portion of this video is going to be on HTML tables. Alrighty guys, so the next step is to generate our HTML table. Uh, and what we're first going to need for that is a data source of some sort. So we're going to use two separate libraries to get all that information in. So we're going to import pandas as PD, and we're also going to import requests. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to back out of PyCharm for a sec, and then go to the IEX API documentation. Uh, if we look right here, we have a new section that we can get for different stocks we can get for the market. So we're going to just use market data and we click on it. We get a JSON response from this API and we're going to use uh, basically an in-house parser for the request library, which uses uh, basically is a method for us to get HTTP requests and send them out to different websites, which we're, is what we're going to do in this case um, for our API. And this returns a JSON response, as I said. So what a JSON uh, object is in general, JSON is just a data format. So it is basically an associative array of key and value pairs. So you'll see we have uh, right here a date time key and a value of 2018-11 with timestamp. And what, uh, for our case, we're just going to use uh, the headline 
and the URL to display in a table so people will be able to click on it. I'm just going to copy the URL real quick and come back over here. And I'm going to start to make a function def underscore update underscore news. And this is going to return our data frame uh, into our web app and put it as an HTML element that we're going to generate in another function. So basically, we're going to generate the table in a separate function, and we're going to update the data frame that we're going to get uh, and generate. So that might be a little confusing the way I put it, but we're just going to say def generate, if I can spell, <laughs> HTML underscore table in one function. And this is going to return our uh, various a structure that we might want, right? So it's in this case going to be uh, our HTML table, which is going to be just this basically. So we're going to actually return an object we're putting in our layout, which we haven't really done before in a function, but we're not doing that function yet. We're going to start with the data frame. So what we need first is a URL. So URL, and we have that. And then we're going to use a request library to get the data. So uh, R equals request dot get and we want the URL and we're going to convert this to uh, JSON string and we can also do this in the JSON library that Python has but it'll just be easier to use request uh, so that's r dot JSON cool and we're basically just serializing the JSON object right here uh, so you can serialize or deserialize the object. In this case, uh, we're taking the JSON and converting it to a string that we can use in a data frame. Uh, so next, what we're going to do is say uh, df equals pd dot data frame. And we're going to convert this out of the JSON string. And cool. So next, we can subset the data frame. So we'll do pd.dataframe and df in double brackets. We'll put the headline and we'll also put the URL. And cool. I'll print the data frame so we can see it when we fire off the callback. And I'm just making sure everything looks okay down here. And that looks pretty good. So what I'll say is update news and the callback, run this function. And our web app will take a second to load. Okay, so our web app is all set. And let's take a look at our console. And it looks like we have an issue with our data frame. Um, I'm seeing what might have went wrong. And, oh, I forgot to actually use this as a function right here. So let's start that again and wait for our console. And you know what I'll do? I'll go on our uh, web app that I'm trying to find. There we go. And I'll resubmit the, oh, here we go. Okay, so, and there we go. We have the headline and URL. So that's going to be our data. And we're going to use the HTML table uh, function right here to get this data first then return it in an HTML table that we're going to put in uh, HTML element right here so we can start and make that element so we don't need a graph in this case all we need is to call call a generate function and I'll comment that out so we'll come up here and start building this. So we'll come up here and uncomment our generate HTML table function to start coding that. So the first thing we want to do is pass in an argument that is going to define how many rows uh, we want stat uh, basically uh, all the time as a static number for the number of rows in our table. So what we'll do is say num underscore rows equals 10. We can say max underscore rows. That might work a little better. Uh, so essentially right here, um, we're going to return our table object that we're going to put into this div right here. So we're going to call this generate table function right in this HTML div. And doing that is going to return 
the object that we need. So we haven't really done that before in this series, but it's a pretty common thing to do in Dash to separate functions to return different uh, layout elements that you're going to have in your app. So what we can do is call this function. We're not going to run it, but we'll say generate HTML table. And this is just going to be a static number, so we don't have to pass in an argument. So what I'm going to do is paste in just the table structure, and then we're going to uh, basically just insert what we need to within the table. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I think the tutorial is getting a little long, and I think it'll be easier to just paste it and explain what uh, everything is doing in there. So let me do that. Okay. I think I forgot a parenthesis. There we go. So basically, we have a div element with a table on the inside, uh, and we have a header, as we would normally in a table, a body, and table rows, and table data. So think of the table data as sort of cells within the table. And we're going to put our stuff within this A tag right here. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is iterate through the entire data frame uh, that uh, we're going to have from the update news function. So I'm going to erase that. And I'll say df equals update news. Cool. I'll come right down here and say for i in range. And what are we going from? We're going from the minimum length, which is going to be one typically um, of the data frame. And we're going to the max rows. So that's going to set the range that we're going to loop through. And we're going to put our table data here that we're going to extract from the data frame. So df.iloc and iloc basically just lets you index elements from the data frame. So at position i, what do we want? We want the headline first. And the href tag, which is going to be a link, is going to be equal to df.iloc. And index i and with the url cool and there's only one more thing we need for a target for the url as well and we're going to set that equal to blank perfect so that should just about do it for our table um and we could do additional styling to it but i think this illustrates the point um, now let's save this and run our app once again And actually, I made a mistake right here. So we don't need this update news uh, function anymore being called there. So it's when we load uh, the entire app, it's just going to call generate HTML table and return everything we need. So let's go ahead and run that. So we can see our app is running click on this and there we go we have our news headlines the only other thing we should probably include is maybe a header tag so we'll say html dot dot h1 or actually h3 is probably a little better we'll say uh, market news and put a comma and click on that again make sure we save it and it looks like I might have made a mistake here. Generate HTML table. Um, yeah, I probably ran it before I saved it. So let's run that again. And remember, it's everything here is live. So when you make changes and save it, it's going to be reflected in your app. So that's why it just didn't work. And cool. There we go. So we have a little news table we can scroll down to. Um, and yeah, that's just the basics of an HTML table. So guys, that just about does it for this tutorial. You can see we have our headline with the link embedded in it. Um, and we can click on it just to see where it'll go. And it looks like we have an article right here from a news source. So to review what we did, we created a callback with state waiting for a submit button to be pressed. And we also created an HTML table with an external data source, which is pretty common to do in any sort of web app. Uh, now that just about does it. And uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial uh, in the next one, or maybe the one after that as well. We're going to be finishing up our app um, and it's going to look great. So thank you for watching and don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. See you later. Bye-bye.